those are bass. Those are bass. Those are bass right there. Right there. Right there. Oh! There he is. Come on. Come on. These are bass. Come on. Come on. Take it. Oh, these are nice bass too. Come on. Take it, take it, take it. Oh, 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 come on. He's on it, he's on it, he's on it, he's on it. Got him, got him. There we go. Finally got a fish. Nice, nice bass on the epoxy. Heck yeah. That took a while. Heck yeah. These are the hardest bass to catch for sure because they're on these tiny profiles. These are nice bass. Heck yeah. Sick. On that epoxy jig. Street retrieve. Heck yeah. That is what's up. Later, buddy. Good morning, everyone. I'm just out here on the kayak in the Long Island Sound right now. Kind of tough fishing. I've been out here for, I think, two and a half hours. Haven't gotten a bite, and I just rolled on some bass. Another boat's rolling up on these guys, so I'm gonna try and stay quiet, but just found some, some really small bait, so I'm tossing this little epoxy jig at them, and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can get into. Oh, got him. Nice. Heck yeah. Oh, he's off. Dang it. Dang it. Got him. Oh. Got him. Dude, second that that boat left. That's crazy. Oh, he's off. Dang it. I have found, uh, you can see it all on the surface now. I don't know what it is. It's tiny. It's like that big, but I feel like the epoxy jig is the closest match to it. Um, there's just so much bait in the water right now, but I've found that these types of bass to be the hardest to catch. On, when they're on this tiny little bait like this, they just get so picky. But I'm on top of the bait right now, and the bass are definitely, they're here, they're just shooting around real fast. These guys are in and out. This is what I'm using, it's like a little, Hoagie epoxy, this is 7 8th. But I'm not really seeing these fish anymore. Striper, when it's when it's slack low tide and there's a ton of bait around, I don't know. I think that they wait until the tide starts moving and then they start feeding again or they move somewhere else. I've just like ran into this scenario so many times where they get picky like that. So unless I see him moving on the surface, ooh, something just broke surface over here. Um, it's best to just leave him alone. So I think I'm gonna do a little bit of wreck hopping for a bit. Not really feeling that last spot I was at. I wanna try and get to some deeper water where the bait's a little bit bigger. Um, see about getting some sea bass. Water's dirtier than I thought, so I don't know if it's like residual from the, the hurricane or or what the deal is, but I'm going to try and get to some deeper water and set myself up for this incoming tide. I think I have a little bit of a game plan here, uh, but luckily the sun's up. I was like shaking earlier. I was like way underdressed, but I'm going to move around. 
uh, warm myself up, go to another spot. I'm gonna hit up two wrecks to start, and then I'm gonna go over to this big rock and see what we can get ourselves into. I think um, once we get high tide at like 1.30 in the afternoon, I'm gonna go back to that spot and just kind of check it out one more time, but hit up some other spots and then uh, come back to it. Feels like what we're looking for. What is that? Oh, it's a big one. Damn. Might be our keeper right here. I think it is. Oh yeah, look at this. Heck yeah. Look at that guy. Pretty sure that's a keeper. Heck yeah. Yeah, he's uh 17. Yeah, it's almost, well, 16 and a half. That's that New York keeper right there. Heck yeah. I knew sizing up was going to be the ticket. Heck yeah. All right, so the Ghost Reef trip was worth it. Um, that's my first keeper this year, so that's what's up. I'm pretty excited right now. A um, little over 16 and a half, um, with the tendrils hitting almost 17, so. But that doesn't count, but yeah. Try this for a little bit longer. I, I sized up intentionally, because I didn't want to get any porgies. That's a nice one. Man, I really want to go investigate this, what else is going on over there. There's two areas where I think there might be Albies right now. Oh, that's a, that's a scup. A snag scup. I see birds over there, and then I see birds over here. And I see boats on both the action. Nice. So I'm thinking about that one's closer. Might actually get a chance. Oh, right in front of me. Right in front of me. I wonder what this is. Could be sea bass, you know? Oh, it's right there. It's right there. I don't know if it is Albies. Yeah, whatever it is. I don't know what this is. Blues? It's blues. I'm going back to my sea bass. Yeah, I'm busted off. Well, I have no interest in catching small bluefish 
it seems like that's what it is and I'll probably come over to the sea bass spot to be honest with you so I'm gonna leave that alone well I'm glad we came out here just because of that one sea bass you know that sort of made the trip worth it but it's pretty dead out here it's pretty dead in general honestly now that the sun's up kind of high not feeling too promising out here but I'm gonna do one more big drift uh, that sea bass, I think it was like 30 feet of water I got them in. Those bluefish are still over here, but I don't really want to mess with them. So I'm going to do one more drift here and then uh, maybe move back to that other spot that I was at that had more bait on it. That is cool. That's why the kayak is so cool. You can sit on top of bait like this and you don't disturb it. Like if the bait doesn't care. And that's the same with pretty much any bait. You can just sit on top of it. It's pretty cool. There we go. There's something. What is this something? Shaking around. Not sure what this is. sea bass it's pretty good there we go that's a sea bass I don't think it's a keeper though seems like they're just sitting underneath these bait schools I don't think that's a keeper though it's nice but I don't think it's a keeper I could measure it but I don't think it's a keeper probably should just throw it back I should just throw it back. Yeah, it's like 13 and a half inches. It's still fun. God, oh, keeps chasing it. Wow, look at all that. That's so cool. Oh, he wants it. I'm so distracted with this bait fish. It's just so cool looking. Yeah, I think these guys are just chasing the bait fish around. That thing is so big. There we go. There she blows. Oh, it came. Oh, no, it's still on. Still on. Still on. Still on. Still on. Stay on. Stay on. She's a good one, Captain. There she blows. That's a really good one. Stay on. That's a really good sea bass. Is it a striper? Nope, it's a sea bass. Really good. No, it's a striper. Wow. What's up, striper? Let me get a picture of you. Striper came up mid afternoon, striper. What's up, buddy? How you doing? A little mid-afternoon striped bass. Whoa! See ya. Well, that striper was fun. I'm having a good time out here. This bait just keeps moving around, and uh, I'm just kind of letting it find me. I'm not really moving. I've just been doing this huge drift and just kind of drifting around. We got that striper randomly. It was in uh, 17 feet of water jigging for these sea bass. We got the striper bass.
there we go. That feels pretty good. Is this another striper? I'm not trying to catch striper. Nope, another sea bass. Pretty good one too. I don't think it's a keeper though. I'm glad I'm sticking with this big profile though. I feel like I'm just dialing in bigger fish in general. Cause the bait is so small, you know? But that's a good one. I think that's worth measuring. But I think it's gonna be right on the 15 dot. They are squirmy. But that's a pretty good one. Faux show. Yeah, it's like, uh, bet if I close the mouth, it would be like 14 and a half, but it's still fun. It's all right. We got our keeper. Keep trying a little bit longer. These are definitely bigger fish over here. So I was wondering why I was dropping those stripers earlier, and then I went to switch this out, and my hook was bent out, so that's why I was dropping them. But it's a brand new hook, and those weren't very big fish. My drag wasn't that tight, and normally I would talk, I'd always talk good stuff on Hoagie because it is good stuff, but I decided to spend a little extra money and save uh, on single hooks because I always swap these out to single hooks from VMC, but I use the Hoagie ones. I don't know who makes these, but they're pretty bad, man. They're pretty bad hooks, so... I think I'm just gonna keep buying them without hooks and then put the VMC ones on them. I use the three times black anodized, I think they're called or something. Oh, they're pretty good. Those are the best ones I've found. There we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. As soon as I go mid-water column, I start getting more action. I might just need to stick to the mid-water column. That's a pretty good one. Is it a striper? No, that's a sea bass. It's a sea bass. They're just chasing this bait around. not a keeper but they're all like pretty quality i will say like since i'm just using this big swim bait they're definitely quality but that's like a 14 incher it's nice though i got this sharp spot right here little little dagger There we go. Feels like another sea bass. All like midwater calm. They're pretty good. I bet you I would get a lot of small ones if I was using the bucktail, like the, the usual rig that I use, which has smaller hooks. This hook is just way too big for these, for the small fish, so. I can feel them pecking at it, but they're not able to bite it.
Oh. Oh. What is this? Corgis? Got him. He looks bigger than a porgy. Well, maybe it is a porgy. I'm not sure. Oh. That's a sea bass. Hitting a different spot right now. He's just hooked weird. Right on target, these sea bass. It's right when I started getting them last year and the year before. Huge pile of bait underneath me. Wow. That is a lot of bait. This feels good. Not bad. Not bad at all. They love the epoxies. Not bad. I think it might be time to call it here. Hey, what are you doing? It's crazy how many of these there are. It's like the second the lure hits the water. I'm not even rolling the camera anymore, but just caught like 20 of these guys. One after the other. I think I'm gonna go try a different spot. Well, not a bad day. I wish that I caught this hook sooner because I think I probably could have caught like the, at least landed one more of those striper at the beginning of the day. But they get really picky when they're on that small bait like that. But I think I'm gonna try a one more area, maybe just do it off camera and try and catch some snappers. So we are back at the crib. It's the next day. I slept until noon because I didn't sleep the night before and then I went fishing until like 2 in the afternoon. Came home, fell asleep, slept for like 13 hours and now I'm back and I'm going to eat these rabbits. No, I'm just kidding. I was going to pet him but he's drinking and she's sleeping. Oh, he's done drinking. He's almost, he's going to be 11 years old in April. But yeah, I mean, I was looking around for those snappers for a while. I actually did a little bit of bottom jigging over where I thought the snappers were gonna be and I got some, some small flukes, so that was fun. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I was gonna do a whole dish, but now I just don't really feel like it. But I got this sea bass. I was looking at my logs and uh, I was like, why am I doing so bad with the sea bass this year? And um, shout out to this Pelican cooler. This thing works really well. When you can see the ice is, it's all from yesterday. And it still, still works really well. This guy's pretty slimy. But that Pelican cooler is great. I've had it for like two years and uh, zero affiliation with Pelican. I just have a lot of Pelican stuff because I think it's affordable. They make nice kayaks too. I think they own uh, Wilderness Systems. But yeah, I was gonna get those snappers. I couldn't find the snappers, so yeah, I was just on the wrong tide or something. But I'm gonna fillet, I mean, uh, not fillet. I'm gonna cook this sea bass whole instead of filleting. Sea bass, they kind of have big rib cages. Um, 
But yeah, it's kind of weird. I've been catching all these tiny sea bass and then um, I got this keeper today. I was looking at my logbook and it's the same, within the same week as last year when I started to get the keeper. So I think the area I fish in is just warmer or something. They don't like it. Um, so in the summer months, um, when it opens up, they just, I think they're more north of me or something. I'm not too sure, but as the water cools down, it seems like they start migrating into the, the area where I kayak fish. So hopefully we do some more sea bass catching cooks, but these guys have big rib cages. And since I only have one of them, I'm going to cook it whole. I'm going to fry it whole. I think I'm going to leave the scales on it too. I know a lot of people descale them when they cook them whole, but I really don't notice much of a difference. I actually kind of like the crispiness of the scales and they're pretty good for you too. They got a collagen, collagen in them. So yeah, that's my story. Good fishing, eh, decent fishing. Um, those hoagie hooks, those uh, single hooks that I bought, um, I thought it was cool that they came with single hooks now. Usually you gotta swap them out, but those single hooks really aren't very good, so. Definitely not gonna be doing that again. I don't know who makes those single hooks, whether it's Hoagie or they get some other brand to make them. They look like owner hooks, but I, I bought owner single hooks and they were a lot nicer than those ones. So I don't know, maybe it's just like a cheap hook that they had made or got a reject, I don't know. But I didn't put too much pressure on those stripers and it bent out pretty easily. So I think I'm gonna stick with my VMC uh, 3X saltwater hooks. Um, those have been the best out of all of the single hook replacements and i pretty much replace all my treble hooks with singles these days i think it's like if you're doing catch and release or um i don't know i just think it's just like way easier on the fish um you know more sustainable i don't know i'm, I'm not i'm not sure but i haven't noticed too much difference on my uh plugs with single hooks either so i think i'm just gonna stick with the single hook thing or maybe just crush the barbs on the front hook of, of my plugs. But yeah, good fishing. Um, appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.